I think we can wing it. Huh? <laughs> welcome and welcome back everybody, Tabletop Toki here. And in today's video, we'll be doing a solo playthrough of First in Flight from Artana Games. Over the course of the playthrough, I'll give a tutorial about how the game is played and be sure you stick around for the end of the video where I share my thoughts about the game in general. A huge shout out to Genius Games for sending me a copy of First in Flight to share with y'all here today. But without further ado, let's get started. Here we have a game of First in Flight set up and ready to play. Over the course of the game, we'll be spending up to four years trying to become a pioneer in the aviation industry. Over the course of those four years, we'll be moving our pawn around the board to select different actions, which will allow us to upgrade and repair our plane, as well as gain friends, technologies, and skills that will help us fly our plane. Our ultimate goal is to be able to fly our plane of a distance of 40 or greater. For setup, we'll start by placing the board on the side appropriate for the player count and putting the year marker on space one. We'll then put all the player's planes down on the bottom of the board and randomly place out the pawns. The player who will be going first will get six coins, second will get seven, eight, and then nine coins. Since we are playing blue today, we'll be getting seven coins because we'll be going second. Players will then draft in reverse turn order a starting pilot, making sure that it is not on their famous side, but the blue starting side. They'll take a descent card and shuffle up their starting deck, which is comprised of four level one glide cards, a brown experience card, and four for unknown flight problems. We'll shuffle those up and place them underneath our player board in the designated area. We'll also put out four skill cards, two friend cards, and two technology cards. In a solo game, we'll be playing against two opponents, Richard and Carl. They will also get planes and player pawns, but their starting deck will look a little different. Instead, they'll have six level one glide cards and two randomly selected upgrades that will be shuffled together. So now that we're all set up, let's get into what a turn actually looks like. So you can see that we have an action selection track. Whichever player's pawn is at the back of the track will be able to move forward. When it's our turn, we're going to be able to move ahead as many spaces as we want, provided that it is an empty space and do the action there. However, for our solo opponent, we'll use the deck. If they flip a one, they'll move to the next open space. If they flip an upgrade card, they'll instead go to the next available fly or any space. There's a very nifty chart that I have off screen here going through how to resolve each particular space and we'll be taking a look at those specific actions throughout the playthrough. For us, we'll be taking basic actions of upgrading various repairs that are placed into our garage after our first flight, upgrading by getting higher levels of glide cards from value two to five, gaining experience, and being able to recruit our different friends, skills, and technology cards to use during our flight and throughout the year. The two main currencies we can use to pay for these various actions are coins and time, which requires us to move forward forward a certain number of clocks based on the amount of time spent. As far as how each action works, we'll get to that in the playthrough and I'll be sure to put some timestamps down in the description if you want to jump exactly to, for example, the first upgrade or the first flight. That's the quick and dirty breakdown and I think with that we're about ready to get started here. We first up have our white player pawn. We're going to say that that is Richard for this playthrough. We'll flip over the top card of the AI deck, which is a one, meaning that they will move to the first empty space space, which is an upgrade space. So looking at our charts here, an upgrade space means that we're going to draw four cards from the upgrade deck and discard the largest one. The others will get reshuffled and we'll put one money on the next flight space. So let's go ahead and put that money there so we don't forget. I'm going to draw from our wonderfully organized and labeled tray here that comes with the game four upgrade cards. We'll take a look at them. And again, we're going to discard the highest, which denies us better upgrades. We have two fours and a three. That four will just be set off to the side and the remaining cards will be shuffled back into the upgrade deck. Next up, we are at the back of the line, so we are going to choose any open space to go to. We could go to the flight right away and make sure that Richard and Carl aren't able to get there, but I do think it would be helpful for us to get some upgrades before we embark on that. We do have a takeoff catapult, which lets us look at the top three cards of our deck, which might not be a bad idea for future flights, and that would cost us three money, but we might also just want to fly and see how we go. 
because this does cost money each time we fly. Begrudgingly, I think we're gonna splurge here and go ahead and purchase that for three coins. Because this is a tech card, you can see in the top right corner, it does show that we can use this. It's an ongoing effect that we don't have to tap and untap and refresh. All of these cards here will not refill until the beginning of the next year. So we're gonna move on to Gustav's turn. They have a one as well. So they'll move to this upgrade space, which we can see if there's any money on this space, we're going to remove it and they're going to add one to their flight record, which tracks the longest distance they've flown. If there is no money, we're going to place one on the next fly space, which we'll go ahead and do here. Now, regardless of what we flip, it's a one. <laughs> Richard is going to move to the fly space. When that happens in year one, they're going to add five to their flight record. So they're going to right up there. If there is money, it's going to go to the adjacent upgrade space and they're going to add plus one to their flight record for each. So we have a total of two. If there was no money, they would have crashed and uh, their player pawn would have had a limited action for the next round. But that was not the case. Moving on to our turn. Let's see. We could do an any and try to get a flight, but I think since our unique ability lets us combo with these skill cards, we should jump ahead and try to grab one of those while we can. So I'm going to spend two points and this allows us to look at an extra card anytime we use a skill that allows us to look at cards. This one, for example, says look at the top three cards of your deck and return them in any order. This one says look at the top four, draw two and shuffle the rest into your deck. And these two are the same. So I think it might be beneficial for us to be able to shuffle them back in so we'll take this daredevil card and then we're moving on to carl's turn we have a one they're going to move to the any space and as we can see when they move there they're going to get plus five to their record so we'll move them up and there are no coins so nothing's going to happen there moving on to richard's turn we have a three so they're going to move ahead to the fly space down here again adding five to their record However, this time there are no coins, so they're going to use a recovery on their next turn. Now, normally the pawns would be standing up and they'll be put down for recovery, but for the recording purposes, we're going to do the opposite as that makes more sense with the overhead camera. Moving on, we have Carl's turn. They're gonna move all the way over to this next flight space, adding five, but they will have crashed because there's no money there. And it's back to us. We might as well take the four money because we'll still be at the back of the pack, meaning we'll be able to go again. And then let's see, we haven't flown yet, so we don't have a repair. We'll see how that works here in a little bit. We can't go to this flight space. I think what we want to do is go here and pay two to recruit a friend because Charles, this dapper fellow, is going to allow us to place one of our flight problems when drawn at the bottom of the deck. And that seems really good. Richard here is going to take the recovery action. So they're going to spend two time and then go back to the normal position. Oops, <laughs> Carl should have been needing to recover. It's back to us. Do we want to upgrade or do we want to skip ahead to the any spot to ensure that we'll be able to fly? That is a tough decision. We do have quite a bit of money, but I'm worried that if we don't fly now, we won't be able to this entire time. Even though we don't have a lot of great cards in our deck, our pilot does allow us to start with an extra three. So I think, unfortunately, we do have to skip all the way ahead to that any space and see what happens. Uh, because if they draw an upgrade card, actually, there are only two upgrade cards. Hold on one second. Freeze. We're going to go here and upgrade. Let's take a look at four cards. We're just going to spend all our money and hope that we get more. So for the upgrade action, you're going to spend an amount of money or time equal to the number of cards you want to view. So in this case, we spent four to look at four cards. Regardless of how many cards we look at, we're going to be able to keep two of them. Oh, there's a five. That's the best one. And there are only a few in there. The three and two will be shuffled back into the upgrade deck. And we're going to get an unknown flaw shuffled into our deck as well. I definitely think that was worth it. And looking at the four cards, we did get lucky with that five and four. We had a five, four, a three, and a two. So pretty even distribution. For Richard's turn, they're going to move to the next empty space, which is a repair space, no money on there. So they're going to place one money on the next fly or any space, which is this one. And then it's our turn. So we can jump ahead and fly, which we're going to take that any action. We're going to do a flight. So the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to shuffle up your fly deck. If you have any cards remaining in your garage from previous flights, those are going to be added to your deck as well. Let me move this off to the side here so we have a little more room. We're gonna lay out cards one at a time. So let's use our takeoff catapults. 
When we begin flying, we may look at the top three cards of our deck and put any number on the bottom and return the rest. So let's do that. We're going to look at the top three. Oh, and what do you know? We do have two flight problems. So this is a good way for us to see what's in the deck. This counts as two if it's the first in our flight. And this one requires us to tap one of our green cards and ignore its ability, or we have to immediately start descending. So let's go ahead. We know this, this won't be the first one since it's going to the bottom of the deck. And we'll leave that green one for later, I think. Yes. Okay. So those will go to the bottom. The rest will return, which is that three. So this takeoff catapult has been used, but we still have our daredevil and we can still use Charlie up to once per year to put one of those red cards at the bottom of the deck. Let's go ahead and start our flight, shall we? So we have our three, a nice strong start. Our four, an even better start, whoa. A one, a one, a zero. If the next card added to our flight is a one, then we have to discard it. So we have a lot of glide cards. We've used most of our upgrades. So I'm gonna use Daredevil. Look at the top four cards of your deck. And with Lewis, we're gonna be able to look at the top five instead because we get a plus one bonus. We're gonna draw two and shuffle the rest into our deck. I definitely want this experience card and we don't want any problems. So I think we will take these two and play them. So the rest will be shuffled here in a second. Our experience card will not only give us a distance of one, but let us add a glide card directly onto our flight. And we'll add this. These will get shuffled up. Now, if at any point we get four flight problems, we will crash. We can choose to play our descend card at any time. That will require us to play two additional cards. If we crash, we get the lower value of an additional two. But if we successfully land, we'll get five added to our total. Now we don't know where these cards are because we did shuffle them up. There's a five in here, but there are also four more problems. So it's not looking great. I think we're going to go ahead and descend to ensure that we can't crash and we'll go from there. So we play two more. Ooh, okay. Unfortunately, we didn't get our five, but we had an awesome start. So I really can't complain. Now that we've descended, we're going to total up all of the distances listed on our cards. So we have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, plus five is 17, 18. So we are soaring to great heights with a distance of 18. We've also passed the 15 mark, which means our pilot is going to upgrade as they are now famous. They've gotten their picture in the paper. And that reminds me that we forgot to use Charlie. We could have put this at the bottom instead and possibly gotten our five, but it is what it is. Out of these remaining cards, we can choose up to two flight problems to place into our garage. Let's see, we do have this one where we're gonna get rid of ones. Actually, those are both. You'll notice that the rightmost space is more expensive to repair, but in this case, they're both the same. So that's that. And the rest of our cards will go back into our flight zone. We can put the back of our descend card with the garage to remind us that we do have cards that need to be fixed or added back into the deck before we take off to our next flight. Carl is going to take their recovery action by moving forward to time. And Richard is going to move one. That means that they're going to discard the bottom most card, in our case, right most due to table space. And they're going to place one money on the next flight or any action spot, which is here. Then they're going to move again. So we're going to shuffle these up. Regardless, they're going to go to the end of the track here. So that's where they'll be. They'll go first in the next round and Carl is going to follow suit. For our action, we'll also be doing the same. So that brings us to the end of year one. For our solo opponents, we're going to look at which space has the most coins on it. In this case, they're tied, so we're going to choose which one to target. All of the coins on that targeted space will be removed, and both of our pilots will increase their flight track by that many coins, so in this case, two. We'll then award the Michelin prize. Whoever has flown the furthest will get seven coins, and guess what? That's us. So we're just going to take that sweet, sweet money from the bank here. And we'll also reset our tableau here of all of our different cards. So we're going to discard anything that's already been played, put out a new set of four skill cards, 
two technology cards and two friend cards. Again, these cards don't refill as soon as they're purchased only at the end of the year. And any of our friend cards that have been tapped will refresh at the beginning of the year. So it looks like we're ready to get started. Our lovely friend Richard is going to be up first. Let's see what they do. Hey, they're going to move to the upgrade space. So again, that means that we're going to draw four upgrade cards, discard the highest one. In this case, ooh, there's another five, unfortunately. That's too bad. <laughs> and we're going to put one money on the next flight or any space. Then it is Carl's turn with a three. They're going to go to that flight space. Now in year two, they're only going to add four to their flight record. So they're at 12, 16, but they will get one extra for this coin, which is at 17 total. Yikes. So unlike us, where we will only record our longest flights, our AI opponents will add a little bit each time for their particular actions. So just to clarify, if we were to get a dud of a flight and only get 10, we wouldn't move our marker down or up. It would merely stay at our longest recorded flight. That being said, it is our turn. Turn. Amber propellers will let us reset our green card, which might be really great um, when we get the experience cards drawn, but we would probably have to buy more experience cards. I think we can wing it. Uh. <laughs> so we're going to go there and spend three money to buy those propellers. And then it is... Richard's turn. They are going to move to this upgrade action. They will remove this coin and get plus one to their flight track for each removed. They'll be at 15 now. And then it's back to us. So we can take the any action to prevent them from flying further, but it will cost us one coin. I think it might be worth it. So we're going to go there and spend one coin. Oh, against my better judgment, we're going to spend three coins to take this experience card and put it into our deck. Yikes. Or do we want to fix one of these cards? This is nice because it combos with our camera propellers and our daredevil and it gets us more glide cards. So I unfortunately think we have to do that. Moving on to Richard's turn. They got a one. So they're going to move to the next available, which is this one. They're going to add two to that space and then add one to their flight record for each coin there. One, two. Carl is going to move to the next available. So they're going to discard this bottom most card and place one on the next flight space. Back to us. We could take the money or we could take a flight. I don't want them to get a flight because we're so close up there. They're only one behind me. So I think I do have to take this next flight space. We're going to collect all the cards from our garage first and shuffle them into our deck. And then we're going to get ready here for takeoff. Oh, baby. Well, let's not forget to use good old Charlie here. And that might be really helpful. In addition, since we are now famous, we get to look at two extra cards anytime we use one of those green abilities. Let's use our takeoff catapult. When you begin flying, you can pay one money. Oh, no, we don't have one money. Oh, that was a mistake on my part. Well, we're just flying blind, I guess. Yes, we could do Daredevil to try to make sure we don't open with any negative cards. That seems like it might be the best bet. One, two, three, four. Okay. Oh, that's a pretty good one. I don't want to shuffle any of those. Uh, I have to draw two. Oh, but we get to look at two extra cards, right? Okay, great. We're going to draw two. Let's do the five and the four for sure. And we're going to shuffle the rest into the deck. So we're starting off with nine. Not bad. And if we can land successfully, that's another five, which puts us at 14 minimum. But again, that's as long as we don't draw four crashes. Let's see what we get here. Oh man, I have to tap a green card or play my descend card. We're going to use Charlie to put this card at the bottom of our deck instead. Charlie's out now for the remainder of the year, unfortunately. That's a one-time use, whereas Daredevil we can use each round. We had already tapped it. We would have had to just descend and I don't want to get into that. So <laughs> let's keep going. We're at 10. Ooh, this counts as two if it's the first in our flight. I think we have to try to at least beat our record. Now, if we do crash, we will have to spend two time as our next action. But at this point, I really want to get one of those experiences cards. Oh my gosh. Largest only counts as two. Well, this is going downhill quick. I'm just going to play my descend card and hope we don't crash. Maybe we'll get an experience. Oh, thank goodness. Where was that? The first time you draw experience each flight, add plus one glide and I can reset one. So let's use daredevil. Now we get to look at four, five, six cards. We only have five though, but we get to play two of them. Shuffle the rest into our deck. So we're going to play our experience card, which gets us the glide and our second card. These will get shuffled in. We barely didn't crash because this counts 
counts as two. And this means that this five is a two, unfortunately. Let's see how we did. We have two, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, one, two, three, four, five, six, 26. Ooh. So if we were to reach 40, we would calculate Richard and Carl's final moves and see who had flown the furthest. They reach 40, we just outright lose. <laughs> okay, so we can put up to two of these in the garage. I really don't like this card that made our five a two because we do have quite a few upgrades and I would really rather them not go to waste. So we're gonna prioritize fixing that and put it in the cheap of our two slots. And our deck is gonna go over here. Ooh, that's pretty rough, but it is what it is. At least we stopped them from taking the fly action. Okay. And then we're gonna move to the next open one. For the four slot, we're gonna put one money on each flight space. Are you kidding me? One, two, Three. That's really bad because at the end of the game, like I said, we're going to update our AI opponent's flight scores and any money on the board is going to contribute to that. So that is not great to say the least. Let's shuffle up our deck to see where Carl goes next. They have a three. So they're going to go to the next flight space, which is here. And again, in year two, they're going to add four plus one for the coin there. So they're 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And this is gonna go to the adjacent repair space. And we have a one, so they're gonna go to the repair space. There's no money there, so we're gonna put one money on the next light space. And then it's our turn. Hmm. Ooh, while flying, add plus two glide to your flight. That seems pretty good, but we have no money left. Oh, I forgot. And I don't want to pay time to upgrade. I can't repair because I don't have money. I can't get a skill. I guess we're just jumping all the way ahead to this any space and flying again to see if we get a better result. But without Charlie this time, which is not great. We did get a tiny bit of experience on that last flight but nothing too crazy. And we also can't pay a money to do the takeoff catapult. We definitely should have gotten four money here and upgraded before we did a final flight, but that's showbiz, baby. We're gonna just kick things off. Do I want a deer double right away and look at the six cards? Yes. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna tap that once per flight. Whoa, good thing we did. Let's play these two cards and shuffle these four flaws back into the deck. Counts as two, discard a level one, tap a green, and downgrade. We got like a little bit of everything. Our plane is just a hot, hot mess. We're going to add this for the experience. We're going to get plus one and re-engage Daredevil for our skill. So not a bad start, but not super great either because we have so many cards in here now. Question is, do we want to Daredevil again right away? I think we'll wait. Maybe we'll be okay. Oh, mistakes were made. All right, largest counts as two. Huh, counts as two. We're daredeviling. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're gonna play two of these. Hey, there's that five. There's that three. So we're at two out of four crashes. These are gonna shuffle back up. Do we want to descend? Hmm, they're gonna go up by at least two based on the coins that are out right now, which puts them at 25. And we are at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, wait, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, because downgraded 12, 13, 14. I feel like we gotta keep going because even if we crash, we'll just be spending the two time to get to the end. So yeah, let's see how that works. One, zero. Oh gosh, I don't like it. Let's descend. I don't want to get rid of a glide card if it's added, which it would have been. Okay, so our total here is five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, plus five is 22. Not better than our previous records. We're gonna stay where we are. We can place these two into our repair shop here. These are just gonna go back in shuffled into our deck. We did get one extra experience. Well, two with our extra card though. So at least there's that. And we avoided crashing, but it wasn't great. And moving on, we're going to go ahead and flip. So four, they're going to go to the next fly or any space. There aren't any. So I believe they're going to go straight around. And then we have a one, which is the repair space. They're gonna remove it and add plus one to their flight record. Oh man. Then they're gonna move another one, get rid of this green, and then place one coin out on the next fly or any space, which is here. Then they are done. And we are also done. So the space with the most coins is three, unfortunately. So they will both move up by three. 
which puts our boy Carl right ahead of us, meaning we'll only get five money for the Michelin Cup this year. Not great. We really needed that two extra money. And then we're gonna reset all of these cards. All right, we are officially at the halfway point, unless someone reaches 40 before that, in which case it'll just trigger the end of the game. We'll have to see how that resolves, but it's, uh, it's looking pretty tense out here, not gonna lie. We are going to flip for our boy here. Upgrade. Let's draw our four and see what we get. So we have a three and then a bunch of twos. Not surprising since some fives have come out already. These are going to get shuffled back in. And then we have our other boy going. Oh man. We're going to go here and discard the bottom card and place one on the next flight. Do we try to fly again? I feel like we need to repair and just let them have the flight so that we can gear ourselves up, but then they're gonna get the any space too and the other one's gonna fly. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so bad. Okay, I think we gotta do it. So let's do our repair. We're going to take the card again. The one in the right spot costs one extra as denoted on the player board. This is gonna be replaced by a basic flight problem. And we're gonna get the upgrade noted in the top right corner for repairing. So we'll get plus one upgrade card randomly drawn. We got a three, not bad. I'm pretty okay with that. And then it's gonna be Carl's turn. So let's shuffle this up and see what we get. Oh my goodness, speaking of upgrades, important. When you upgrade your card, you're supposed to get one of these. So I'm just going to do that now. It's way too much to look back and try to see what we had. Let's say roll control where we look at the top two and put them on the bottom of the deck. So we're just playing with all sorts of handicaps. Let's remember too that Charlie is back on the docket here. Definitely something that's easy to look over. They're going to go to one. So to a fly space, this is going to go to the garage. They're going to increase by two for the coins. And in year three, they get a three bonus to their flights. And then we're going to go one space to the any space. So they get plus three to their flights and they would remove coins, but there aren't any. So orange goes to 30 and then it is us. Do we want to pay some money to get another ring? No, we want to save it so that we can actually use our takeoff catapult. We're learning. This is how it works. So do we want to get four money or do we want to fly? This is also what we ran into last time, but I'm really thinking that we can't let them fly again because the chance of that they'll get close to 40 is pretty high. I think we're gonna take the money so that we can hopefully get another repair or an upgrade. It's so tough to know what's the right thing to do. They're probably gonna go to the fly space, but even if they take two, I can get one last flight in. So we're gonna try this. Take our four money and hope that that was the right decision. They have a four, so as anticipated, here we go to the fly space. These will move here, and they're gonna move up a total of five. 26 to 31, okay? And then move one. So for this one, they're gonna get add two and then plus one for each. Are you kidding me? So they get four. Oh my gosh, okay, this is not looking great. And those don't come off. So 34, this is gonna be the last year for sure. Then they have a three, so they're gonna to move to the flight space. This is gonna move over and they get plus four. Oh, 38, if they get another flight, we are done for. They've drawn their two upgrades though, so they're not gonna skip ahead to the any space, which means we have a little bit of time. Do we want to upgrade? I think we do. Instead of getting a new friends or a tech card or an upgrade, that adds more flaws into our deck and we want less bad flaws. <laughs> and we get plus three glide. This is the way to go, I think, because that's basically like a three upgrade. So we're going to spend three. Oh, wait, that's the upgrade spot. Sorry. We're going here and spending three to fix this flaw. We get a basic flaw problem. And for that particular one, the bonus was three glide cards. So those are going to get, oh, we have to pay one extra because it's in the rightmost slot. And then we're going to flip and see what happens. So one, they're going here, discarding this, adding one to the next available flights. Yikes. This is it, friends. We have to take that any spot. If someone reaches 40, we get that last flight. But I think it would be good for us to be able to fly on our own and see if we can achieve 40 to get the double versus them getting to it and moving ahead again. Yeah, because we need the coins for our takeoff catapult and that saves us one per flight. So we're going to try to fly. Let's go all the way to the end of the board. We will pay one. 
And we will use our takeoff catapults to look at the top three cards. This does not trigger Lewis's ability because it's not a green skill card. We look at them, we can put any number on the bottom and return the rest. So we'll put that on the bottom and put these back. So we have a one, we have a three. Do we want to roll control or daredevil? Let's go ahead and daredevil. We're gonna look at six, three, four, five, six. We're going to draw two and shuffle the rest into our deck. Ooh, good thing we did. Let's take the five and the four. These get shuffled back in. We could also roll control now to look at the top four. Um, and that would allow us to put more on the bottom. Do we want to play it safe with that? Maybe. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. Next one would have been a basic flight problem. That actually would have been fine. Oh no. Put any number on the bottom. I guess we're going to put this one on the bottom of our deck, knowing that the last one will be bad. And then these go back on top, but we're going to play all of them. I'm going to keep going and push my luck. Oh my goodness. Oh, we don't have any abilities other than Charlie where we can put one at the bottom, but I think we need to press on and hopefully get an experience card. Basic flight problem first, not bad. We got in our experience, yes, okay. So we're gonna put one for the experience card itself, one for Gambard Propellers, and let's do Roll Control Refreshed. So we can look at the top four cards. We're gonna use it right away. We put any number on the bottom and return the rest. So let's put this one on the bottom, which is a problematic card. We're gonna draw these. Ooh, we're running out of room over here. This is a pretty long flight, y'all. Okay, one, two, we get an experience. And that's only for the first time we draw one. So that just triggers that. And then we should be good here. I'm not remembering what the composition of the deck is, but I do know that at least four of them are bad and two could be good. So as long as we don't get a bad one here, we'll be fine. Do we just descend now? Mm, even if we get a bad card, it would. these three would all have to be bad for us to crash. I'm gonna push one more. Oh no. We have to play our descend card. We don't have any more green to tap. So there's that. And hopefully we don't get two bad cards. Otherwise we are... Oh, just squeaked it out. Oh my gosh. All right, actually not just, we could have taken one more point of damage. Let's total up our value and we don't have that lame downgrade card either. So we should be good. So we are at four, nine, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, plus five is 25, plus another five is 33, 38, 39, 40. Eight. All right, so that is going to trigger the end of the game, in which case I could put this in my garage, but we're going to do one more flight and that's going to be it. For the end of the game, we'll get one more flight, but our opponents will get to update their flight records equal to the number of coins that are remaining on the board. Oh my goodness, that's not great. I'm going to be honest. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Are you kidding me? I was feeling really good and now I'm not feeling so great. So 48 is the record we have to beat, 36 we've already beaten. So we get one last go at this, our final flight here. And let's see if we can make this happen. We need 48 distance in order to win. Shuffling these up nice and good. We're gonna pay our last coin, our last cent in our pocket to use our takeoff catapults. We do have good old Charlie here rooting for us in the stand. So we're gonna look at three cards and we can put any number on the bottom. Nope, those all look great. <laughs> so let's do this. Let's do one, two. We know the next is an experience card, which will allow us to refresh these. So let's go ahead and look at the top four cards of our deck, draw two and shuffle the rest in. We're gonna look at six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we draw two. So we want to draw the experience card and a glide. The rest will be shuffled. So let's do that. The experience card is going to give us plus one glide and it's going to activate our propellers, which will allow us to untap Daredevil. And then we're going to continue on. 48 is not anything to scoff at. That is a lot. In fact, we have one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do it this way. One. Okay. Let's see what we get. Do we want to look at more cards? Oh, we have Charlie. We have Charlie. Two. Oh, there's a five. What up? Three, four, five. What up? Huh? Hey, what's up? Okay. I think we can keep going. Yep. Yep. This is good. This is good. We fly in. All right. So we're at 
5, 10, 15, 20. Let's see if we can push this even further. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't think so. We've already, our tech is moot. We have Daredevil and Roll Control. We have good old Charlie, so I think we're fine. Basic flight problem. Nobody panic. That's fine. At least it's not the double. I think we're good to keep going. That's one. Here's two. Ooh, do we want to put that at the bottom? Or we can tap one of these and not use it. Let's put it at the bottom. Charlie to the rescue. Okay. Oh no. If the next one is a zero, it's we get rid of it. So let's use roll control daredevil. We'll look at six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and play two. Hopefully we won't get a one that way. We're gonna play the experience in this. The rest will get shuffled in. So experience card adds one glide. And we don't have to get rid of it. Um, as per our problematic flight, these get shuffled. And then I think we have to use roll control to look at the top four cards and we can put any number on the bottom and return the rest. Whoa. Okay, this is pretty tricky. One, two, three, four. And this is one, two, three, four. Uh, okay. But any number on the bottom, we'll put the basic flight problem on the bottom. So we know that one's there. And then we have these will be returned. I want to play them. So we're at 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, oh, wait, what happened? Yeah, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Oh, that's a three. So we're at 32 plus five plus two. That's only 40. We need to push it. Okay, okay, there's another three. Oh man, let's do like kind of this, this kind of thing. I don't know, these are fives. <laughs> okay, what are we doing, what are we doing? Out of these cards, we know that most of them are bad. We have to descend. Oh, I probably should have descended one card earlier. Uh, oh my gosh, we just barely made it. Oh baby. We're so lucky that one glide was there. Okay, let's count up our total. Oh man, this is stressful. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. This is 30, 35, 43. We were so close. <laughs> we were just shy of the record. We would have had to have um, 49 or higher in order to beat our opponents here, but we gave it a valiant effort. I mean, we were the first to become famous, but as they say, easy come, easy go. <laughs> so while we were off to the races with a great start, unfortunately, we weren't able to set the record for first in flight. So there you have it. That is a solo playthrough of first in flight. This is a game that I was not originally interested in personally. When it was announced, I heard some good things about it, and I thought, oh, that's a cool theme. I appreciate it. It seems inventive, but I played some Push Your Luck deck builders, and eh, by and large, they fell pretty flat for me, though I do like Push Your Luck games, and I do like deck building. However, when Genius Games reached out and said, hey, are there any games you're interested in trying out? I did remember some of y'all having recommended this one and being excited about it when it first came out, so I added it to the list. They were generous enough to send me a copy, and I am so glad they did. Y'all, it's been a while, but this game is like, whoo, just mainline it, put it right in my veins, because oh my gosh, is it fun. Building your plane and the way that the mechanics work around that, it really does feel like you are working on building your plane and trying to get it to fly as far as it can. Being able to lay out those long runs of cards really gives you a sense of euphoria. It really feels like you're soaring on high as those combos go. I love the fact that the new upgrades also come with unknown problems that you then have to fix. So genius that you don't get to know what those are because if you were inventing something, yeah, you wouldn't know what the problems are ahead of time. And using the different skills while you're in the air to manage those problems and get the greatest flight, it really feels like you're up there doing the thing. And this is coming from someone who is not big on immersion in games. You can't help but get excited. The action selection is also great. It feels like a race. You're really incentivized to want to push your limits farther, faster than your opponents, to become famous, to get 
add in one last flight before the end of the year, it all feels crazily thematic. Usually the first time I play a game, and certainly within the first handful of times I play a game, there are some errors that stick out to me or little things that I say, ah, oh, this doesn't line up or, you know, I wish this was a little cleaner or this was a little better. But everything here from the mechanics themselves and how they work to the immersion and theme and ties to the game, the artwork, the presentation, the rule book, the length of the game, all of those different things just really feel super well thought out and well designed. It's been a game that I have played back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I want to show it to everybody that I know, both for its integrity of design and for the amount of fun it is to play and get your plane up into the air. So if any of those things are of interest to you, and even if they initially aren't, like I said, I wasn't at first, but who have I come around on that? Be sure to check out First in Flights. And that's all the time we have for today. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, feel free to like the video. You can subscribe and click the bell for notifications so that you don't miss any of these other amazing games coming up here on the channel. And a fairly new development, if you like what we do here on the channel overall, feel free to check out our memberships as well. They're as cheap as 99 cents a month, one seventh of a cup of coffee for a whole month's worth of content. Thank you so much as always for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.